the right honorable speaker, honorable members of parliament, I come in peace. On the authority of President Nana Adodanko Akufuado, I beg to move that this honorable house approves the financial policy of the government of Ghana for the year ending 31st December 2017. On the authority of the President, and in accordance with Article 179 of the 1992 Constitution, permit me to present to this August House the maiden budget of the President of the Republic of Ghana. This presentation is an abridged version of the 2017 budget statement, and I would like to request the Hansa Department to capture the entire budget statement and economic policy. I also submit before this August House the following reports. The 2016 Annual Report on the Petroleum Funds in accordance with Section 48 of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act 2 2011, Act 815 as amended. The 2016 Annual Debt Report in accordance with Section 72 of the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921 and the 2016 Energy Sector Levies Report in accordance with Section 6 of the Energy Sector Levies Act 2015, Act 899. Mr. Speaker, let me first thank you and the House for approving my nomination as Finance Minister. My profound gratitude to both sides of the aisle. Thanks for the dry run of three and a half hours. I pray that I'll be let off soon at this time. Mr. Speaker, I also stand here humbled by the President's courage and confidence to elevate me to this very weighty and high office of Finance Minister of the Republic of Ghana. Of the Republic of Ghana. Order. And this, I thank you. Order. I thank you. Of the Republic of Ghana. A nation, a nation, a nation with a manifest destiny for greatness, a nation with very high expectations for President Akufuado's government, a nation that is 60 years old, remains a diamond in the rough and therefore needs more than a shine. Mr. Speaker, it is this providential point in our history that I've been given this great but exciting responsibility to participate in sending Ghana beyond aid and to realize our birthright as a black star of Africa. I, Mr. Speaker, accept this role with all the solemnity and reverence that it deserves. Mr. Speaker, I would like to assure this House, as I also did with the Finance Committee, that I will work with members with utmost candor and respect. You are first and foremost the legislator, the representative of our people, and I have been privileged to witness the sacrifices you made in 2016 and gone through to be here. Are you go. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, I am standing in the rather large size shoes of a legacy of family members, such as Dr. J.B. Dankwa, Standing in the rather large shoes of a legacy of family members such as Dr. J.B. Dankwa, Order. Mr. William Oporiata, Honorable Amwakwata of CPP, Order. Dr. Jones Oporiata, my father, 
President Nanado Agdanko Akufuado, and Honorable, and Honorable Atachia. I have Mr. Speaker. Honorable members. I have Mr. Speaker. speaker. I have Mr. And have speaker. A conference with leadership. I may have to suspend sitting and have a conference with leadership if we are not in the position to list. If this continues, this is what we have to do. I have. Read the budget. I have, Mr. Speaker. I have, Mr. I have, Mr. Speaker. By our standing orders, our procedures and tradition in this honourable house, this honourable house will listen carefully. Honourable members will be seen to be making notes, and at the appropriate time, they will come out with all that they have to say. Honourable members, they will be listening at this stage. I thank you. Thank you. I have, Mr. Speaker, been brought up because of these people to respect this house. And I also like to honor my forebears. Finally, Mr. Speaker, let me freely admit that this battle ahead is indeed the Lord's. And I humbly confess before this august house and the nation of my inability to accomplish this enormous tax without the help and the leading of the Almighty. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, we can resolve these challenges. Amen. And establish a righteous and just society for all. Mr. Speaker, nine days ago, the President presented the State of the Nation address to this August House. His address, in addition to presenting the State of the Economy, also broadly outlined the vision and policy direction of the government. A vision of hope, of jobs, of wealth creation, and a robust economy that supports a thriving private sector. With this budget, I present to you the policies, strategies, and actions will undertake to deliver the President's vision. Mr. Speaker, let us acknowledge that we have inherited a challenge economy in which we all are stakeholders. Considerable debt overhang and rising interest payments caused by excessive borrowing, expenditure overruns and accumulated arrears caused by excessive sole sourcing, inflated cost of projects, lax physical policies, Lax fiscal policies and weak commitment to controls. Revenue underperformance caused by leakages, loopholes, and tax exemptions. Slowdown in economic growth caused by energy challenges and a lack of an enabling environment for the private sector. Limited capital investment, among others, due to rigidities from earmarking of revenues that severely limit the fiscal space and undermines the prioritization of all government's policies, and an urgent need to collaborate with our workforce and build a shared partnership to enhance training and improve their productivity. The country's debt stock, Mr. Speaker, has reached a level of approximately 73% of GDP as at the end of 2016, which is in excess of debt sustainability threshold of 70%. This has resulted in high debt service costs, with interest payments alone taking up nearly 42% of tax revenue. This, together with compensation of employees and statutory payments, is more than total domestic revenue, leaving no fiscal space for growth-enhancing policies, programs, and expenditures. Total expenditures at end December 2016 
stood at 30.3% of GDP against the target of 26.4% of GDP, with an outstanding stock of arrears of nearly 7 billion CDs. This is at variance with the performance criteria on the non-accumulation of arrears for the 2016 fiscal year under the IMF-supported Extended Credit Facility Program. The large fiscal slippages resulted in a fiscal deficit of 8.7% of GDP on a cash basis and a 10.3% on commitment basis. This is a sharp deviation from the IMF program fiscal target of 5.3% of GDP. We intend to reverse this trend and restore fiscal discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the rate of economic growth has slowed down in recent times with 2016 growth estimated at 3.6%, the lowest in over two decades. Of particular concern is the erratic performance of the agriculture sector and the continuing energy challenges which has negatively affected the industrial sector. The effect of this is a struggling private sector and rising unemployment. Mr. Speaker, while inflation and interest rates have recently been on the decline, we still have to fix the underlying macroeconomic fundamentals to ensure that this trend is sustainable. Mr. Speaker, the economic challenges we face require deliberate but urgent, well thought out strategic steps and the backing and total support of the Ghanaian people. I am confident that we have the human resources, especially in this house, and in our diaspora community, the experience, and most importantly, the resounding mandate of the people to guide and inspire us. This budget presents a clear roadmap on how we'll move this economy from its current state into a full-fledged middle-income economy, a Ghana beyond aid. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, our goal is to build the most business-friendly and people-centered economy in Africa, which will translate into job creation and prosperity for all Ghanaians. We will strike the right balance between fiscal consolidation and growth by making credible policy choices that will create a fiscal space to implement growth-enhancing initiatives. Mr. Speaker, we intend to build a partnership with labor that will result in a social contract to mark an era of peace in which we will mutually enhance the productivity of our workforce. This commitment, however, is hampered by five constraints which we need to overcome. Low revenue collection, expenditure overruns and corruption, high wage bills, rigidity of fiscal structure caused by heavy earmarking of tax revenue, and high debt service payments. This budget presents a proposal to address these issues permanently, and I hope I can secure the support of this August House in this regard. Revenue administration remains a challenge. To boost revenue streams, we will strengthen tax administration, reduce tax exemptions, plug revenue loopholes and leakages, and combat tax evasion, especially at our ports. We will broaden the tax base whilst reducing and abolishing some taxes and levies. The National Identification Scheme, a priority project of this administration, which we intend to relaunch this year, will support our efforts to rope in the economically active but undocumented citizens and the informal sector of the economy, thereby broadening the tax base and accelerating financial inclusion. Mr. Speaker, we would adhere to them to and maintain good economic governance principles of fiscal discipline, accountability, and transparency. To reiterate what the President says, we will protect the public purse by guaranteeing value for money in all public transactions and exercising prudence and discipline in our fiscal management to deliver on the aspirations of the Ghanaian people. Inefficiencies and waste in government spending will not be tolerated, and there will be strict enforcement of all relevant laws and regulations, especially the new Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921. 
Government will pursue an effective debt management strategy to ensure debt sustainability. We will also adopt global standards of risk and treasury management to ensure accountability in the use of state resources. In addition, Mr. Speaker, we will work to reduce the amount of government borrowing and the resulting crowding out of the private sector. Mr. Speaker, as an example, in the 2016 budget statement, the entire allocation for the ministries of roads and highways, trade and industry, food and agriculture, water resources, works and housing, youth and sports, and Ministry of Transport amounted to a total of 2.2 billion Ghana CDs. Interest payments in 2016 alone of 10.8 billion will be nearly five times what was allocated to these six key ministries combined. This is how pernicious this is how pernicious Order. our debt stranglehold is. Mr. Speaker, the budget will set the pace for job creation and accelerated growth by empowering the private sector. To accomplish this, we will shift the focus of economic management from taxation to production. This will reduce the cost of doing business and create a conducive climate for the services sector, investment, and job creation. In this regard, a number of taxes that impede growth will be reviewed and, if necessary, abolished. Government will reverse the recent low growth trend by boosting agriculture and industrial productivity. Mr. Speaker, the 2017 budget will set in motion the following key policy priorities and flagship projects. Establishment of the Infrastructure for Poverty Eradication Project, IPEP, under this project, every constituency will be allocated the city equivalent of $1 million to combat poverty, <laughs> combat poverty, order, and order, $1 million to each constituency in this house to improve, order. to combat poverty and improve the lives of rural dwellers and deprived communities. Implementation of the One District, One Factory Free Program by initiating a massive industrialization campaign across the country, which will equip and empower communities to use their local resources to manufacture products that are in high demand both locally and in the sub-region. Establishment of the Zongo Development Fund to support the provision of critical infrastructure and services, rollout of the National Identification Scheme to facilitate efficient delivery of public and private services and help formalize the economy, rollout of free SHS to ensure equal opportunity for secondary education for all, an enhancement of human capital for the country. Rollout of a national digital addressing system to provide unique addresses for all properties in Ghana, and restoration of teachers and nurses training. Order. Mr. Speaker. Order. Despite the previous government significantly missing the 2016 targets of the IMF, I want to assure my fellow Ghanaians, investors, and external stakeholders that we are committed to continue with the Center Credit Facility Program with the IMF. We will, however, review some of the targets and structural reform benchmarks to accommodate our priorities of tax reliefs and other positive measures to boost the private sector. Mr. Speaker, the Akufuadu government seeks to sow the seeds that will bear sufficient fruit to make this and future generations prosperous. This will be done by unleashing the creative abilities of Ghanaians, facilitate increased economic activity, which will lead the improvement in people's lives. Mr. Speaker, there are exciting times ahead, and there is every good reason to be optimistic. 
that our country, that our country is ready to work again. Ghana is ready because the people are ready. And in NPP, they have a government that is ready. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, our government look forward to a partnership of progress with our honorable colleagues across the aisle. Mr. Speaker, we must as a nation come together to confront our reality. The president did mention nine days ago that he was in a hurry. Mr. Speaker, we must all be in a hurry. We must trigger a national sense of agency to deal with our deficits. It is continual, it's, its continual presence curtails our capacity to leverage our many opportunities and resources that we have as a nation. Let me stress, Mr. Speaker, we cannot borrow our way out of these challenges. This will be tantamount to creating and sharing poverty, which only leads to a loss of our fiscal sovereignty. So like the President, we must all be in a hurry to grow our way into prosperity. This budget, Mr. Speaker, seeks to do this. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, my presentation today will follow this outline. I will present a short brief on how the global economy performed in 2016, the medium-term outlook, and the expected impact on the Ghanaian economy. This will be followed by the macroeconomic performance for 2016 against the target set. I will then present the President's macroeconomic targets for 2017 and the medium-term targets. In addition, I will briefly talk about some key sector deliverables in 2017 and then provide you with the key policy initiatives for 2017. And I will finally conclude with highlights of key messages in the budget. The global economic performance. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, order. The global order. The global economy is expected order to witness some improvement in growth in 2017 and the medium term after a lackluster performance in 2016. The January 2017 update of the IMS World Economic Outlook projects a global growth of 3.1% in 2016. This is expected to improve marginally to 3.4% in 2017 and further to 3.6% in 2018. The downside risks to the global outlook, according to WEO, include increased restrictions on global trade and migration and its negative impact on productivity. In addition, high corporate debt, declining profitability, weak balance, balances, and thin policy buffers in emerging market economies may lead to capital flow reversals and depreciation of the local currency. Commodity prices. Mr. Speaker, Oil prices have picked up in recent weeks, resulting mainly from an agreement among major producing countries to reduce supply. Crude oil prices are expected to average $55 per barrel in 2017, about 28% increase over the 2016 levels. Gold prices are expected to decline from an average of $1,249 US dollars per fine ounce in 2016 to, to $1,219 in 2017, due to largely an expected strengthening of the US dollar. According to the Commodity Markets Outlook by the World Bank, cocoa price is projected to average about $2,940 per ton in 2017. Uh, implementation of ECOWAS Common External Tariff. Mr. Speaker, Ghana joined nine other member states to implement the ECOWAS Common External Tariff, CET, effective February 1, 2016. The ECOWAS CET is considered a major platform for the establishment of customs union that will facilitate free trade and advance greater economic integration within the region. The tariff is expected to help address problems such as cross-border smuggling and dumping in the sub-region. Government is currently monitoring and evaluating the impact of the new regime on various sectors of the economy. 
implications of global development for Ghana's economy. Mr. Speaker, we address the risk of commodity price volatility. Government will work towards diversifying the economy. We will add significant value to our exports and support local manufacturing of imported goods, which can be produced locally in partnership with the private sector. Macroeconomic performance for 2016 growth. Mr. Speaker, growth has remained subdued over the period the 2016 GDP based on a provisional term for the first three quarters of the year is estimated at 3.6 percent with the non-oil rail GDP estimated at 4.6 percent, same as target. At a sectorial level, the industry sector, specifically mining and quarrying, underperformed due to a contraction in upstream petroleum output, which constitutes the bulk of the mining and quarrying subsector. All the subsectors in agriculture sector, however, recorded positive growth rates. The services sector continues to dominate the sectors with a share of 54.3% in 2016. Mr. Speaker, inflation, which remained elevated for most part of 2016, began to slow down towards the end of the year. Inflation began the year at 19%, peaked at 19.2% in March, and ended the year at 15.4%. Monetary and credit development. Mr. Speaker, the key monetary aggregates and credit to the private sector recorded slow growth in 2016 in light of tight monetary policy stance. The broad money supply M2 plus at the end of 2016 recorded an annual growth of 22% compared to 26.1% the same period of 2015. This was mainly driven by moderate growth of 19.5% in net domestic assets and a net foreign asset growth of 29.8% in December 2016. Growth in total outstanding credit to the public and private institutions moderated further in December 2016, a reflection of a higher incidence of non-performing loans and a tight monetary policy stance. The annual growth in total credit slowed to 17.6% at the end of December 2016 from 24.9% recorded in 2015. Stock market developments. Mr. Speaker, annual changes in the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index remain negative, generally reflecting investor preference for higher yielding money market instruments. The GSC Composite Index lost 15.3% year on year in December 2016 to close at 1,689.09 points from 1,994.91 points in December 2015. Total market capitalization stood at 52.7 billion at the end of December 2016, showing a year-on-year -year decline of 7.8%. Interest rates. Mr. Speaker, interest rates in 2016 exhibited mixed performance. The Bank of Ghana policy rates was kept at 26% until October 2016, as risk to inflation and growth were assessed as balance. The policy rate, however, was reduced to 25.5% as inflation pressures eased while domestic growth conditions continued to deteriorate. Yields on short-term government securities decreased, while those of medium to long-term government of Ghana bonds increased in line with government's policy to properly align the yield curve and extend the maturity profile. Exchange rate. Mr. Speaker. The Ghana city remained relatively stable against the major currencies in the currency market in 2016 Order. on account of tighter monetary policy and improved foreign exchange inflows. Order. I don't remember. However, this trend was reversed in the run-up to the December elections as December pressures mounted. The Ghana city recorded a cumulative depreciation of 9.6% and 5.3% against the US dollar and the euro, respectively, but appreciated by 10% against the pound sterling in the interbank market in 2016. Mr. Speaker, the balance of payment turned out surplus for the first time since 2011 due to improved current account balance. Accordingly, accordingly, there was a build-up in gross foreign assets which supported the relative stability in the exchange rate. 
The BOP surplus was $247 million US dollars compared to a deficit of $129 million in 2015. The trade balance improved from a deficit of $3.1 billion in 2015 to a deficit of $1.7 billion in 2016. Due to increased exports receipts by 7.2% and a decline in imports by 5.3%. The gross foreign assets at the end of December was estimated at 6.2 billion US dollars from 5.9 billion US dollars at the end of December 2015, representing a buildup of US 277 million dollars. This was sufficient to provide cover for three and a half months of imports and goods, same as in December 2015. Fiscal developments. Mr. Speaker, the main objective of fiscal policy, as envisioned in the 2016 budget, was to consolidate government's finances by reducing the fiscal deficit from 6.3% of GDP in 2015 to 5% of GDP in 2016. Provisional data for 2016, however, indicates that the envisioned fiscal consolidation was not achieved. As a result, total revenue, domestic revenue and grants was 11.1% below target, an actual of 33.7 billion Ghana cities against a target of 37.9 billion Ghana cities. While expenditure, including outstanding expenditure claims, exceeded the target by 16.2%. These slippages resulted in a fiscal deficit on commitment basis of 10.3% of GDP. On cash basis, the fiscal deficit was 8.7% of GDP against a target of 5% of GDP. Period recorded a deficit of 1.4% of GDP against a targeted surplus of 1.2% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, the shortfall in total revenue and grants was broadly attributed to the impact of energy challenges on households and firms. Lower than anticipated receipts from oil due to both lower than program benchmark crude oil price and production and non-realization of proceeds from both tax and non-tax categories. In addition, tax compliance was relatively weak. Mr. Speaker, Total expenditures, including outstanding obligations, amounted to 51.1 billion at the end of December 2016. Outstanding obligations of 5 billion Ghana cities comprise MB obligations with the Ministry of Finance currently, which had not been captured on the GIVMIS, as well as outstanding payments to statutory funds. These outstanding obligations relate mostly to compensation of employees, goods and services and domestically financed capital expenditure. Petroleum receipts in 2016. Mr. Speaker, in 2016, GMPT lifted six parcels of brute oil, consisting of the 31st to 35th Jubilee and first 10 lifts, on behalf of the state and exported a total of 21,580 million scaps of gas to Ghana National Gas Company. Total group lifted was 5,856,921 barrels of oil. Receipts from crude oil liftings for 2016 included revenues from the sale of 4.8 million barrels of oil from the 30th lifted in December 2015 and the 34th Jubilee lifting, which amounted to 207.79 million US dollars. The proceeds from the 35th Jubilee and first 10 liftings in December 2016 were received in the first quarter of 2017. Mr. Speaker, actual petroleum receipt for 2016 fell short of the 2015 performance by 29.1% due to the continuous decline in crude oil prices, the decline in Jubilee production, and lower 10 production. Mr. Speaker, Total public debt stock, as end 2016, stood at almost 73% of GDP, up from 72% in 2015.
This was due to the larger than expected fiscal deficit and financing requirement in 2016. Domestic and external debt stood at 31.7% of GDP and 40.8% respectively. In nominal terms, the public debt stock as at end 2016 stood at 122.3 billion Ghana cities with domestic and external debt of 53.4 billion and 68.9 billion Ghana cities respectively. <laughs> energy levies. Mr. Speaker, the Energy Sector Levies Act 2015, Act 899, was enacted, quote, to consolidate existing energy sector levies to ensure efficient utilization of proceeds generated from the levies, impose a price stabilization and recovery levy to facilitate sustainable long-term investment in the energy sector, and to provide four other related matters. Mr. Speaker, the law requires the utilization of the energy sector levies mainly for the clearance of legacy debts of SOEs operating in the energy sector to support power generation and power sector infrastructure, subsidy for premix fuel, and the stabilization of petroleum price. A total amount of 3.2 billion was programmed to be collected as total energy sector levies for the year 2016. Actual collection at the end of the year was 3.3 billion Ghana cities. A breakdown of the utilization of the levies is provided in this budget statement. Mr. Speaker, a few challenges have been encountered in the utilization of the proteins and we'll have to come to this August House for amendment of the Act. Order. Order, Honorable members. Mr. Speaker, government's Order. policy objective for the medium term, among others, will be to build the most business-friendly and industrialized economy in Africa, capable of creating decent jobs and prosperity for all Ghanaians, modernize agriculture, improve production efficiency, achieve food security and profitability of our farmers with special emphasis on value addition, develop leadership skills, quality education, entrepreneurship, get job skills, and creative skills and ensure a functioning social protection system which addresses the needs of the weak, marginalized, vulnerable, and socially excluded, a preferential option for the poor, among others. Mr. Speaker, to achieve our broad macroeconomic objectives, our policy direction will be to restore and sustain macroeconomic stability to shift the focus of economic management from taxation to production, to manage the economy competently and with integrity, and make the machinery of government work to deliver the benefits of progress for all Ghanaians. Mr. Speaker, prudent monetary and external sector policies will also be pursued by the Bank of Ghana to complement the fiscal policy stance to ensure price and exchange rates stability. Mr. Speaker, we are confident that the above highlighted policies, which are discussed in detail in the budget statement, will contribute to the achievement of the following macroeconomic targets for 2017. Overall real GDP growth of 6.3%. Non-oil real GDP growth of 4.6% end year inflation of 11.2%, average inflation of 12.4%, overall fiscal deficit of 6.5% of GDP, primary surplus of 0.4% of GDP, and gross foreign assets to cover at least three and a half months of imports of goods and services. Mr. Speaker, we believe that our medium-term policies Order. anchored in Order. fiscal discipline, a broadened tax base, elimination of wasteful expenditure, prudent debt management strategies, complementary monetary policy, 
and sustainable external balance will ensure even better microeconomic outcomes in the medium term. In, my, in our media review, we'll further outline some new means to broaden the tax base. Macroeconomic targets for the medium term 2017 to 2019 include the following. Overall real GDP growth to average 7.4%, non-oil real GDP growth to average 5.6%, inflation to be within the band of 8 plus or minus 2% in the 2018-2019 period, overall fiscal deficit to reduce to 3% by end of 2019, current market deficit projected to decline to 4.8% of GDP in 2018 and further to 2.7% of GDP in 2019, and gross foreign assets to cover, not less than three and a half months of imports of goods and services in the medium term. Mr. Speaker, All consistent with section. Order, order. Honorable members, consistent. order. The debate Mr. Speaker, will see you later. Consistent with section 16 of the PFM Act 2016, Act 921, we have also set the following targets on primary and secondary fiscal indicators to monitor the fiscal health of the economy towards the achievement of our fiscal policy objectives in 2017. Non-oil primary deficit of 0.8% of GDP, public debt stock equivalent towards trend of 70.9% of GDP, capital spending of 12.6% of total expenditures, and domestic revenues to GDP ratio of 21.4%. Resource mobilization for 2017. Mr. Speaker, Total revenue and grants, including program receipts from petroleum for 2017 fiscal year, is estimated at 44.9 billion Ghana cities, indicating a 33.5% increase over the professional outturn in 2016. Total non-petroleum revenue and grants is estimated at 42.6 billion, representing a 29.2% increase over the provisional outturn in 2016. Mr. Speaker, total receipts from petroleum is estimated at 1.2% of GDP and amounts to 2.4 billion, representing 231.2% increase over the outturn in 2016. Domestic revenue is estimated at 43.4 billion, or 21.4% of GDP, and it is expected to be 33.5% higher than the provisional outturn in 2016. Mr. Speaker, total tax revenue is estimated at 34.4 billion, representing 6.9% of GDP. Of this amount, non-petroleum tax revenue is estimated to grow by 32.4%, and this amounts to 33.8 billion, equivalent to 16.9% of non-oil GDP. Taxes on income and property is estimated to increase by 47.7% to 13.4 billion in 2017, accounting for 39.1% of total tax revenue. Of this amount, royalties from petroleum is expect estimated at 616.8 million Ghana cities. Taxes on goods and services are estimated at 13.9 billion Ghana cities representing a 13.3% increase over the provisional outturn in 2016 and 40.3% of the estimated total tax revenue for 2017. International trade taxes are estimated at 7.1 billion, representing 3.5% of GDP and 20.6% of total tax revenue. This estimate represents a 61.1% increase over the provisional outturn for 2016. Mr. Speaker, the significant group of this tax type emanates mainly from additional 1 billion Ghana cities in tax measures that will be realized as savings from the reduction in the amount of import exemptions that will be granted in 2017 fiscal year. Mr. Speaker, non-tax revenue is estimated at 6.7 billion Ghana cities, representing 15.3% of domestic revenue. An amount of 3.4 billion is expected to be retained by MDAs 
for the funding of the activities and the rest lodged in the consolidated fund. Of the total amount estimated for non-tax revenue, an amount of 1.7 billion is estimated as non-tax petroleum revenue. Mr. Speaker, grants from development partners is estimated at 1.5 billion, equivalent to 0.8% of GDP. Resource allocation for 2017. Mr. Speaker, total expenditure, including provision made for the clearance of areas and outstanding commissions in 2017 is estimated at 58.1 billion, equivalent to 28.6% of GDP. The estimated expenditure for the year represents a 13.7% increase over the provisional outturn for 2016. Of this amount, 3.7 billion Ghana cities, equivalent to 1.8% of GDP and 6.4% of total expenditure, will be used for the clearance of arrears and outstanding commitments. Mr. Speaker, provision has been made for the clearance of up to 20% of the outstanding claims from previous years, whilst we await the outcome of a special forensic audit of these outstanding claims. Mr. Speaker, compensation of employees is estimated as 16 billion Ghana cities. Of this amount, 14 billion equivalent to 6.9% of GDP. Expenditure on goods and services is estimated at 3.5 billion, representing 1.7% of GDP. Total interest payments estimated at 13.9 billion represents 23.9% of total expenditure and is equivalent to 6.9% of GDP. Of this amount, domestic interest payment constitutes 80.5% of the total interest payments and amounts to 11.2 billion Ghana cities. Mr. Speaker, the existing legislation that have underpinned the estimation of grants to other governments' units over the years is being reviewed to break the cycle of rigidities in the budget. Consequently, grants to other government units compromising statutory payments into the National Health Insurance Fund, Ghana Education Trust Fund, the District Assembly's Common Fund, Road Fund, Energy Fund, Transfer to Ghana National Petroleum Company, Retention of Internally Generated Funds by MDAs, and other earmarked funds has been constrained to a ceiling of 25% of all our tax revenues. Allocation for grants to other government units is 9.7 billion. Mr. Speaker, in addition to the significant tax incentive granted in this year's budget, an amount of 20, 241 million has been budgeted in social benefits to assist lifeline consumers of electricity and transfers for social protection. A total amount of 7.1 billion has been allocated for capital expenditure. Of this amount, 38.9% will be financed from domestic sources and the remaining from foreign sources. Mr. Speaker, based on the revenue expenditure estimates, the 2017 budget will result in an overall budget deficit of Ghana City's 13.2 billion, equivalent to 6.5% of GDP. Financing of the deficit will be from both domestic and foreign sources. Mr. Speaker, net, net domestic financing Net domestic financing is estimated at 14.6 billion, equivalent to 71.1% of GDP, and includes financing from divestor receipts of 1.8 billion. Net foreign financing is estimated to constitute a net repayment of 1.3 billion, equivalent of 0.6% of GDP, an amount of 300.7 million Ghana cities is estimated to be saved in the Ghana Petroleum Contingency Funds, while the sinking fund 
is expected to be drawn down by 716.1 million. Projection of 2017 petroleum receipts and allocation. Mr. Speaker, the estimated benchmark revenue price for crude oil is $56.142 per barrel for 2017 with a benchmark output of 43,875,920 barrels, which is 120,208 barrels per day, and 32.5 million scops for oil and gas, respectively. The petroleum revenue for 2017 is estimated at $515 million, with BR projected at $242 million. Mr. Speaker, the second three-year three cycle, three cycle for the review of the petroleum revenue distribution formula, as stipulated in the PRMA, has elapsed. We would like to request this August House to maintain the assistant distribution formula as follows. 30% of the net carried and participating interest to GMPC, 70% of net receipts after GMPC is to the APFA, 30% of net receipts after GMPC to the Ghana Petroleum Funds, 30% of the amount allocated to the Ghana Petroleum Funds to the Ghana Heritage Fund, and 70% of the amount allocated to the Ghana Petroleum Funds to the Ghana Stabilization Fund. We would also like the House to approve the following priority areas for the spending of the APFA for 2017 to 2019 in line with the PRMA. Agriculture, fiscal infrastructure and service delivery in education, fiscal infrastructure and service delivery in health, and road and rail infrastructure development. The medium-term debt strategy and debt sustainability analysis. Mr. Speaker, the debt strategy for the medium term will be to manage the public debt at the lowest cost and at prudent levels of risk to bring our debt to GDP ratio to 65% over the medium term. Consequently, in accordance with the requirement of the PFMA, my ministry will conduct and publish a debt sustainability analysis and update the MTDS to guide the borrowing plan and operations. The reports will inform policy decisions leading to the reduction in the debt burden and insulation against other fiscal vulnerabilities. Sectorial performance and outlook. Mr. Speaker, the sectorial policies are designed to achieve our broad objectives of jobs and wealth creation and macroeconomic stability while ensuring compliance with the PFM Act. Permit me to update this August House on the performance of some key sectors of the economy and the outlook and the mid for 2017 and the medium term. I will begin with this August House, the Parliament of Ghana. Mr. Speaker, Parliament continued to discharge its mandate through the consolidation of 181 papers, including 25 bills, four legislative instruments, eight constitutional instruments, 19 loan agreements, and 39 committee reports. Out of the 25 bills laid, 18 were passed into law. Parliament also facilitated the establishment of the scrutiny office to provide expert analysis of policy measures on bills. The budget, loan agreements, and international financial transactions brought before this House for approval. In 2017, the office will be strengthened to undertake pre-legislative scrutiny of bills through research and information pursuant to the PFM Act. Mr. Speaker, Parliament will complete a review of its standing orders to open up committee meetings to the public and empower committees to undertake independent investigations and summon witnesses and government officials to appear before it. The Parliamentary Training Institute, established in 2016, will be strengthened to undertake and promote research in parliamentary democracy. A strategic plan for the takeover of the Institute will be developed in 2017. Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, the government recognizes agriculture as the main anchor of the country's economy. Unfortunately, we have witnessed a steady decline in the sector and production levels have fallen consistently over the years. 
In the medium term, we intend to modernize the sector to improve productivity and achieve food security and profitability for our farmers. Mr. Speaker, in 2017, government will launch the Planting for Food and Jobs campaign. The campaign is designed to encourage all citizens, both urban and rural, to take up farming as a full part-time activity. It is intended to structure it along the lines of the SYL Operation Feed Yourself program in the 1970s. The campaign will involve the production of maize, rice, soybean, sorghum, and vegetables. Other crops will be adopted in subsequent years. The campaign will be anchored on five pillars, namely provision of improved seeds, supply of fertilizers, provision of dedicated extension services, marketing, and e-agriculture, and monitoring. This initiative, Mr. Speaker, is expected to increase the production of maize by 30% from the current production levels, rice by 49%, soya bean by 25%, and sorghum by 28%. This will create 750,000 jobs in both direct and indirect employment. Yeah, yeah. The ministry will import improved seeds to augment any shortfall for the planting for food and jobs campaign. Mr. Speaker, in 2017, the Ministry will continue the fertilizer subsidy program to help increase the productivity of our farmers. To this effect, we intend to distribute nationwide an expected 180,000 metric tons of subsidized fertilizer. Fisheries. Mr. Speaker, the fisheries sector, subsector employs a significant number of our people especially along the coastal areas. Over the past years, efforts have been made to also boost both marine and inland fishing and support agriculture development. However, we believe we need to modernize the artisanal fishing methods to ensure sustainable fishing and also improve production levels. To modernize and transform the industry, the Ministry will complete phase one of the Anomarbo Fisheries College to enhance research and knowledge base in fisheries technology for all operators. It will also collaborate with relevant institutions and the private sector to develop modern landing sites and storage facilities at Jamestown, Cape Coast, Axim, and Mumford. Trade and industry. Mr. Speaker, the country's industrial sector faces significant challenges. The principal ones of which are lack of access to finance, high interest rates, inadequate and poor quality raw materials for industrial processing, poorly developed domestic trade, and an unreliable and expensive power source. The goal of government over the medium term is to address these challenges in ways that enable industry to thrive and become a major source of jobs, especially for our youth. A number of major policy interventions will be initiated this year as part of the strategy. In 2017, the Ministry will roll out its district level component of the national export strategy to develop one export commodity in every district. In 2017, the Ghana Commodities Exchange Project will establish a state of the art transparent and professional market institution to create an orderly, transparent, and ready market for goods that are produced by farmers in the country tourism, culture, and creative arts. Mr. Speaker, tourism, culture, and creative arts remains one of the most underdeveloped sectors in our economy, despite the immense growth potential and opportunities for job creation. When developed, the sector can positively impact the lives of many individuals, families, communities, and small enterprises in our country, providing needed jobs for our team in youth. Our objective is to transform the country into a major meeting, incentive conference, and exhibition center. To facilitate this, we will aggressively develop our tourist sites to bring them to world-class standards. In 2017, the government will kickstart the Marine Drive Tourism Investment Project, covering the over 240 acres of land from Osu Christian Bo Castle to the Arts Center. This project will transform the beach area into a tourism enclave to create jobs for our youth. The ministry will partner the private sector to develop the IFWA 
Sutherland Pack into an ultra-modern world-class pack, especially for 2017, Mr. Speaker, we will use IT to promote and market tourism via the single portal window. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry will also undertake a food festival to showcase the diverse, rich Ghanaian foods through cooking and competition throughout the country. Mr. Speaker, this government intends to ensure that Ghanaians enjoy reliable, efficient, and affordable power to provide comfort in their homes and support the development and growth of their businesses. In 2016, significant efforts were made to address some of the challenges in the sector. This includes an increase in the total installed generation capacity by 880 megawatts. In 2017, government will continue to increase the installed generation capacity of the country to meet the growing demand for electricity. A total of 1,227 megawatts of installed capacity is scheduled to be added. 370 megawatts for AXA project, 107 megawatts for GPGC project, 350 megawatts for SEND power project, and 400 megawatt early power project, among others. Mr. Speaker, ECG and NETCO will continue with systems to upgrade projects to improve the quality of power supply to customers. Order, order. Furthermore, steps will be taken to ensure that outstanding issues surrounding the implementation of the Ghana Compact 2 are addressed to allow for its implementation in order to achieve the desired objective. Mr. Speaker, with regards to oil and gas, government will work with the Jubilee Partners to address the shortfall in oil and gas production, resulting from the 2016 damage of the turret bearing on FPS Soquam and Chroma and would adopt a, a three-phase approach to convert the FPS Oquam and Chroma to a permanently spread mode. First, first gas from the 10 field to the gas processing plant is expected in the first half of 2017. GMPC is engaging with the partners to develop an integrated technical and commercial schedule that would target gas startup in the second quarter of 2018. Railway development. Mr. Speaker, this government, this government believes that rail will be a major catalyst to drive the growth that we envisage in the coming years. Rail transportation provides safer, cheaper, and faster ways of moving goods and people to facilitate trade and support economic activity. Our vision is to open up the country and provide new opportunities to our people to do business and trade among themselves. In that regard, government will complete the second day to Takradi via Kojokrum section and continue the section from Kojokrum to Takwa through in Suta. This will help improve the operational performance and revenue of Ghana Railway Company Limited and enable the company win itself from government support. In addition, it will enhance the performance and competitiveness of the manganese mine located on the corridor. Work will commence on the western line, which starts from Takrade and terminates at Kumasi, having two branch lines, namely Dunkwa to Awosu and Kojokrum to Second D, covering a distance of some 340 kilometers. The corridor, when completed, will facilitate the haulage of manganese, bauxite, cocoa, and other bulk commodities. The feasibility studies and front-ending engineering design have already been done on the line. We will also have to secure funding for other major projects such as the central spine, which stretches from Kumasi to Kupaga, covering a distance of 700 kilometers.